Hey there. We here at David Kahn's 30 Minute Half Hour Show owe oh, you, the listener, and friend of the show, comedian Joe Gorman, an apology. This week, we encountered an issue with the visual element of the show, causing us to lose video of our guest. We apologize for the error and promise to do better in the future. Please enjoy the show. David Collins. 30 Minute Half Hour Show with David Collins. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of David Collins' 30-Minute Half-Hour Show. I'm your host, David Collins, and we have another great episode for you today. Some great games, a great guest, and some great voicemails. One thing I needed to address right off the start of the show today, there have been some rumors flying around that I may be collaborating with some other podcasts on some project. We'll have to set those rumors straight right away today. Stay tuned, and I'll be settling those rumors later in the show. We have a great show for you today, but before we start the show, of course color of the day. Today's color of the day, Caribbean blue. Caribbean blue is a blue-green teal known for its depth and intensity. I went to a local concert last week in Monroe, Wisconsin. I saw Joe Bonamassa, and he had a beautiful guitar, the color Caribbean blue. Today's color of the day, Caribbean blue. One last thing before we start the show. Today's sponsor of the show, Lincoln Street Lanes. Thanks, John Harris, down there in Womega, for putting in a good word for me over there. Not a lot of people have the guts to do that these days. Discover the ultimate destination for family-friendly fun in Womega. Gather your loved ones and embark on a, memor- on a memorable bowling experience that won't strain your budget. Lincoln Street Lanes is not just a bowling alley. It's a haven for shared laughter and quality time. And if you're craving some music excitement, join them on a Saturday for karaoke. Because at Lincoln Street Lanes, the fun never stops. Thank you, Lincoln Street Lanes, for sponsoring the episode today. Today's guest is Joe Gorman, and we're going to get right into world news with David Collins. And Joe, I like to ask this to guests when we have a guest on the show. When you think of world news, what are you thinking about this week? Uh, hold on, I'm hearing like a lot of uh, background music. Um, overall, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Well, when you think of world news this week, what do you think about? Yeah. Oh, uh, well... <laughs> Okay, now I can now uh, I'm listening to the music. Um, I mean, a lot of things right now. I think like the thing that's on everyone's mind is Matt Rife's Netflix special. Is that you right? Know? Is that something when you think of world news that's interesting? Definitely something that's, that's come up news. in conversation this week. We were talking about the L.A. freeway arson fires. Did you hear about these? No, I'm on the East Coast, so that's, of course. Uh, that's a different world to me. Well, it was big national news here. Interstate 10 in South Downtown LA reopened this week after being closed for nine days following a massive arson fire. Sick. Yeah, I don't know about you, Joe. I'm old enough to remember when they referred to LA fire, they were talking about the weed. Oh, nice. I also remember the riots of the early 90s. That was another LA uh Do you remember that? And I wanted to ask you a little bit about that. We're going to get into your comedy and how long you've been doing it there. And of course, you are a national comedian. You've lived over in that West Coast before. Did you see this? Here's a little more New York-centric news. Did you see Jared Leto last week? Oh, when he was climbing the side of the Empire State Building? That's right. Jared Leto climbed the Empire State Building last week in order to promote and announce the new tour of his band, 30 Seconds to Mars. Jerry and I were talking about this all week. He keeps saying this is the worst thing that happened in his memory in a New York City skyscraper. <laughs> nice. That's about right. Yeah. Do you I think can, I can, can you that. imagine a comedian, speaking of Matt Reif, could you imagine him climbing a building yeah. to promote that special or even promote a tour? I feel like they should, but no, they wouldn't do anything. Like right. That. I never could they imagine would, something like that. They wouldn't do anything like brave like that. Climbing a building, yeah. 30 seconds to <laughs> Mars, more like 30 seconds of falling to your death. Yeah. That's actually a pretty long fall, though, if you're falling for 30 seconds. Right. Definitely. Did you see Joe I'm Biden this week? With God. Sleepy course, Joe? Joe What's Biden, now? always in the news. Him and his wife held a Thanksgiving event for military personnel and their families in Norfolk, Virginia this week. The Bidens could be seen yeah. behind the counter spooning sides onto the plates of veterans. The president was quickly okay. stationed Just behind nice. the mashed potatoes after being, quote, tired of people calling me a turkey. <laughs> After the event, Joe Biden went on to step on a rake. I feel like we're talking about Taylor Swift every week here. Have you gone to any of these Taylor Swift mm. concerts? 
No, but my girlfriend has. Is that right? Well, I hope she's safe. There was an incident at the Rio de Janeiro concert this week where somebody actually died in the concert. She had to postpone the show due to the risk of over extreme heat. Oh my God, it was in a mosh pit? I'm not exactly sure, but I'll tell you, talk about a cruel summer. There you go. <laughs> and that was World News with David Collins. We have a great guest for you today. Today's guest is a New York City transplant, originally from San Francisco. He's worked all over the country, from great venues like Comedy Burrito Festival, Cobb's Comedy Club, San Francisco Sketch Fest, the Savage Henry Shits and Giggles Festival, to The Stand in New York City, and many more. Described as a high-energy performer, Roseanne Barr was quoted as saying, now here, was, here comes the quote, mm -hmm. very funny. Yeah. He has a new show that can be found on YouTube and Spotify, Buff Boys Podcast, where they promise to tackle some of the heaviest issues facing our society today, and maybe have a laugh or two along the way. Isn't that sweet? Yes. <laughs> Please welcome our great guest today, Joe Gorman. Hello. Welcome Thanks to for having me. Welcome to the show today, Joe. And we want to learn more about your comedy and you in general, but we have a quick segment that we need to jump into right away today. Of course. David Collins' red cards, because we have a few red cards that I need to hand out this week. The first red card this week goes to McDonald's. And we've talked about the blind in the last few weeks, so I wanted to, this kind of caught my attention. They have a sign next to the soda fountains at these McDonald's. It says, if you are disabled, please see the counter for assistance. But one thing I noticed about this sign, no braille. And it's oh right God. next to the soda fountains there. I would expect that that is where the blind people need the most assistance. So that's why McDonald's gets a red card this week. Nice. Of course, we have this new studio here, and we are located in Iowa most recently in our new place here. And I've noticed we actually have a growing problem. This is probably something you can relate to of the homeless in this area. Oh, yes. And it's probably yeah. something that you're much more used to than we are here. We've had to put no trespassing signs all around the building. Oh. Right. It's become an issue. They like to sleep in the building, not to mention the intentional vehicular sound pollution terrorism they commit at the intersection near the studio here. But that's why the homeless in Iowa get a red card this week. Nice. They've had it too easy for too long. You know, it's a nice place to be for them, if you ask me. Mm. Last red card this week is actually a red card update. Are you familiar with Chicago comedian Aaron Putnam? The name sounds familiar, but I don't think I've Aaron met them personally. Aaron Putnam. We had to give him a red card a couple weeks ago for blocking all of us on all social medias. Why? Why would they do that? Well, we had to reschedule something. He was supposed to appear on the show, and instead of rescheduling, just went ahead and blocked us. Well, nice. Aaron Putnam will be showing this picture on the screen. I think, is that right, Jerry? We have a picture here. Well, Aaron, if you're not going to come on our show and appear on my show, then I'm going to appear at your show. I went ahead and went to Chicago. We snuck into the green room, and I got this picture with him that we'll be showing on the screen here for any of the YouTubes here, and then we left the show. And that's why Aaron Putnam gets a final red card this week. Good. Drag them. Joe, do you have any yes. red cards that you'd want to give around out this week? Red cards? Yes, I want to give a red card. Now, you strike me as somebody who yeah. has got a lot of red cards to hand out. Nothing but red cards. Complaints and grievances, as I call them. Who would you want to throw one of those red cards to this week? Absolutely. I want to, I want to give a red card to Joe Biden as well. I think his, his, his nonchalance on, on the Israel-Palestine is nonsense. He's got to step it up, man. If he doesn't, my buddy RFK Jr. will. Well, we uh, usually try to yeah. avoid politics on the show, bringing him up a oh, couple nice. of times already. But we'll give Joe <laughs> Biden a red card this week. Yeah, take that. And then... The rest of America that didn't support Matt Reif's incredible Netflix special. Well, that's too bad. If anybody's yeah. seen that special, make sure you email me, dc 30 minute half hour at gmail.com. We'd love to learn more about that Matt yeah. Reif special. And we'd also love to learn more about you, Joe. So you've Hell come yeah. from San Francisco to New York City. What I would did. you tell me? Well, I would, was curious about this. We were talking about this before mm -hmm. the show. What do you think is the biggest difference between those two areas? It's the size and opportunities. Uh, San Francisco is a great, great city to start your comedy career. Is in. that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, really good comedians uh, in that area. Well, I started um, broadcasting and comedy in yeah. Manhattan, Kansas. And recently, Ooh. the last year, I've been up in this Iowa area. One time, one thing I'll tell you about the eastern Iowa region, much more crass than what I'm used really? to. Really? 
That's that. The further east you go, the more crass it gets. It must be that. So that. do you notice that when you go to the New York City also? Uh, it's a supportive scene, man. Um, San Fran or New York, or San Francisco is pretty supportive, but you know, New York, it's, you know, despite what everyone says, you know, there's a, always, there's always going to be people that are pushing, like saying like, oh no, Austin's the new comedy Mecca. Not right. Anymore. And I'd love to hear your opinion about Austin there. That's something we don't talk often on the show about. That sound means of course, it's time for our first game. I'm not sure if anybody let you know, but we do play games on this show. And our first game nice. today is made just for you. You might've actually played this game before. Gorman or Gorman. So we're going to go over some people and a couple clues about who those people might be. And you're going to have to determine, is that someone with the last name Gorman or is that a Gorman, that being a killer of some sort? Have you played this game Ooh. before? <laughs> I have not. That's interesting. Well, there's a first time for everything. Are you ready to yeah. play Gorman versus Gorman? I am. I am ready. Perfect. Why don't we jump into round one here? Round one, clue one. Born in Los Angeles, California, raised by a single mother. Clue two, born with an auditory processing disorder and speech impediment. Clue three, the day after Biden's inauguration appeared on Late Late Show with James Corden. And another reference of Biden there, go figure. Well, what do yeah. you think about that? Was that somebody with the last name Gorman or does that remind you of some sort of Gorman? Now keep in mind, these could be yeah. fictional or non-fictional people. Ooh. Well, I feel like the television appearance, they wouldn't have somebody that gored a human being. So I'm going right. to say it's somebody with the last name Gorman. That's correct. And you know, you never know. Maybe they'll have for a Halloween something or other, but it was an right. inauguration day. I think that's past the fall. The answer was oh. Amanda Gorman, American poet yeah. and activist. That's right. You're doing great on this game so far. Why don't we jump ahead and look at round two? Round two. Are you familiar with true crime? Do you follow a lot of gore men? I, I, I am somewhat familiar, yes. I'm well-versed. Perfect. Well, maybe you'll do well here on this game. We're looking at round two, clue one. Graduated from Harvard College and Harvard Business School and moved to New York City. Clue two. Is or was Tom Cruise's neighbor? Clue three. Occupation investment banker. Is that That's a gore man? Yeah. Or is that That's a gore man? That's somebody that killed someone. That is a gore man. It has to be. And that's exactly right. Do you know which gore man that is? God, no. It, it sounds like a Patrick Bateman type. That's person. exactly right. Patrick Bateman of American Psycho. <laughs> this must be a perfect game for you. I'm so glad. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why don't we look at round three of this game? Do you like this game? I, I love this game you so You know, maybe far. Thanksgiving is coming, and this is a special Thanksgiving episode. Yeah. This might be something that you'll be able to play around the dinner table this year. I'll bring it to the family. They'd love to get in on this. That's perfect. Why don't we look at round three? Round three, clue one. At age 18, was already working as an assistant precinct captain for a local Democratic Party candidate. Clue two. Graduated in 1963 from Northwestern Business College. Clue three. In March 2nd of 1976, divorced for a second time. Hmm. That was round three of Gorman or Gorman. What do you think that might be? I think that that's somebody with the last name Gorman. I'm ah. sorry. Well, you can't get them all right there. You're doing so well on that game. That was actually famous John Wayne Gacy. Ah. Famous Gorman. Ah. <laughs> So we want to talk about your podcast, Buff sure. Boys Podcast, for a few reasons there. Mm -hmm. But tell me about your comedy first. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I have been doing comedy for over 20 years. I started in high school. Wow. I started my junior year of high school uh, where I would open for local bands uh, in around San Francisco. Uh, then in college. Uh, bands. Around That's good Asia. that you're opening for bands. We have some music-related content coming up. I hope that mm -hmm. you're a fan of music. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's perfect. So you started opening yeah. for bands. That's very interesting. That's a lot smaller. I actually had the opportunity. My first experience doing comedy was through the radio. We had some comedians on the radio mm -hmm. show in my college. Shout out KSDB. And I actually had the opportunity to open for Mark Norman about 10 years ago now. Oh, my God. That's that awesome. I just, I just went to his uh, wedding last wow. year. Wow. Yeah, small world, dude. That is a small world. That's fun. So I wanted to ask this. This is an interesting question. So if you've been doing it for so long, this especially 
makes sense. So you have inspirations coming up. Mm -hmm. Now you have those inspirations. Who might those inspirations be? And after doing comedy for 20 years, have those inspirations changed? You know, I think one of my biggest inspirations was Weird Al Yankovic. I thought that's interesting. Was, do you do yeah, musical so comedy? No, I don't. Have you I ever? I, you'd be surprised how many comedians tell you that their first couple of years they were doing musical comedy. It's it's one of the easier ways to kind of get into comedy. It's the fastest way to get a laugh. Um, right. And a lot of the work is done because a lot of musical comedy are parody songs. So the music's already there. You just have to change the lyrics. Um, no, I, we I, love I, a yeah. song parody on this show. We probably present a song parody every other show here. It's a great way to sell a new story or something funny that's happening in pop culture there. Let me ask you, how would you describe your style of comedy? Uh, definitely high energy. Um, high energy. Almost kind of a, yeah, almost like a stream of consciousness. Uh, you know, I, I you consider know, myself yeah. more of a storyteller here, but we've had people tell okay. us that they're a joke writer. One person even told us they're a bit of a rant comedian. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, I feel like I, 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 um, I feel like, but a rant comedian, they still have like a direction they're working towards. Right. Whereas like with stream of consciousness, it's just like, well, this just popped into my mind and I really wasn't going anywhere with it, but you know, it, it depends, but sometimes stream of consciousness can turn into a rant. You know, Definitely. and you won't even know until like halfway through. Well, it probably depends on your disposition there. You have to wonder. I want to talk a little about your name. We have some more questions that are comedy sure. related, but we okay. do have a quick segment that we need to jump into here. Sure. People with the same name. That's people with the same name. Joe Ooh. Gorman. Did you know that you have other people with the same name? There also is a Joe Gorman near you, in fact. Joe Gorman uh -oh. is a singer, songwriter, and vocalist based mainly in Greenville, New York. Joe okay. Gorman recently released a new signal single, Getting Ready for Love. Do you know Joe Gorman? I don't know that Joe Gorman, no. Why don't we take a little listen to his new single? Nice, yeah. Wow, isn't that fun? Do you think you'll listen Incredible. to Joe Gorman in the future? I think I might. might I think to, I might. Yeah. Might have to check that out. And we ask this to everybody here. This is an interesting question to me, and I can't imagine. You know, it's the, the best question. How do you how do you come up with your material? Um, life, man. Um, I think it's. I, I I think I don't sit down. I don't sit down and like write. I, I just try to live So you life. just think about it. You know, some rappers, that's something mm -hmm. that a lot of comedians don't do and rappers do. They never write anything down and they're able to memorize these long yeah. songs. Do you do that with comedy? I do. I do. Like for me, I feel like if something's funny, I'll remember it. Um, and, you know, if it wasn't that funny, then who cares? I'll tell you, and if it, I must say this at nauseum. I have the exact opposite. I need to write things down all the time. I say all the time, you know, I can't think of that right now. If you asked me earlier, I would have been able to think of it, but I just can't right now. Mm. That doesn't happen to you. No, I, 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 I must be lucky. Um, that is in, a great in the sense trait. That, but I think it's also, I've been doing it comedy for so long. Cause when I first started writing, doing comedy, I would write every, I would, I would write down my entire set word for word. And that's wow. what I would stick to. It must be a lot of um, words. It was for the longest time, you know, I'd have like a page and you know, I go up on stage with like my page of material. And then like when I'm on stage doing it, I look back on my notes and I only said like maybe three, four words on that, that sheet of paper. Right. You know, well, that's fascinating. So, yeah. We want to talk about your podcast and actually podcasts in general, Buff sure. Boys podcast. But one yeah. thing that Jerry put together a compilation this week, and it's and it makes sense because it is a Thanksgiving themed episode. But we're actually thinking of taking a we've noticed this trend of some of the most popular podcasts out there doing something. And maybe Jerry's always looking for new ways to boost the algorithm. So let's take a little okay. listen to this clip and see what we think about it. Pizza sure. Leon. Yeah, shout out to Pizza Leon. Oh yeah. I really hit the spot. Devin, they give you straws. So I'm gonna put uh, Two straws my, coming up. There's my shake. <laughs> Two straws, boss man. Okay, there's. Guys, right, you gotta. Everyone's gotta stop eating right now at the same time. This is we all want to drink. No, no. Well, at the very least, have a little fucking move away from the microphone while you chew. My apologies. This is so cool eating on the podcast. Probably one of the best podcast episodes ever made. That's coolest. <laughs> so, Joe, I wanted yeah. to ask you about this podcast, Buff Boys Podcast. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. How would you describe the format of your podcast? In your face. That's how I would describe it, man. We uh, we record in my living room, which is the way to do it. You know, uh, I have my my co-host Matt Marin. He's always like stuff in his fucking face in on the. Is pod, that right? Too, is that man. good? Does that yeah. help? Track, you know, it's different, these podcasting things and the different formats that we're doing. Of course, I come from a radio background. It's something that uh -huh. we would never do. But you have to do different things to get the get the computers to kind of attract people now. So I'm not Absolutely. sure if this is going to be helpful. We asked about your your co-host, Matt Marin, actually. Is he a mm -hmm. comedian also? You could say that. Yeah. <laughs> you could say that. How long has he been doing yeah. comedy? Uh, I think about 10 years. So I'm, I'm definitely the more senior. He is, like, for all intents and purposes, my employee. You know, I see. Well, I've been doing comedy about ten years. I feel like that's a pretty long time, but you know, you never know. People have been doing it for 40, 50 years at this point. That's true. Now, we only just met each other, Joe, but I already feel mm -hmm. like we kind of have a connection. I'm really happy that we've gotten to speak today. I don't want to yeah. be too aggressive here, but I am known as a bit of a hot interviewer, and there's something that we sure. needed to address. I think people would have been a little ashamed if we didn't bring this up. Of course. So you have a podcast, Buff Boys Podcast. And if you search mm -hmm. for that podcast, you do find your show, Buff Boys. Yeah. But when you search for the show, that's not the only thing you find. You also find a playlist called Buff Boys. And here are just a few of the videos on that playlist. Okay. Strong 14-year-old. 14-year-old nice. flexing. 13-year-old. Uh -oh. Sexy muscle nice. boy. Naked vlog. Uh -huh. Sexy guy with muscle is back. Interview with Cody Cachet. Interview with a twink bottom. The list goes on and on. Do you have any uh -huh. concerns about being associated with that type of content? I was worried because I thought that playlist was private, but I guess it's a public one. Right. No, what it's out do? there for everybody. In fact, it's impossible to not run into when trying to find your show. Did you plan on that? Do you do you do you think that that's any speaking of ways to boost the algorithm there? Yeah. It's a beautiful coincidence. You know, when you're done. Oh, I wouldn't say beautiful. Like these, these, these 13 year old, men. 14 year old yeah. flexing. But, you know, I you guess want to it... cleanse the palate and then you want to hear some guy talk about an 80s movie he watched and he was stoned afterwards you know right so i wonder which you, one that mine. would be if anybody is following that playlist or joe gorman's podcast that can kind of let me know which of those is which email me dc 30 minute half hour at gmail.com do you like music joe love music we have a I love it. great yeah. new segment this week dance song review time that's right dance song review time Friend of the show, Dan McCullough, this week decided to send us a fun song review. Let's take a little listen. Hey, David. Uh, thank you for letting me do a segment for the show. Uh, you know I'm always dying to get to work with you and your team. This is a new segment where I'm going to take a newly released song, uh, tell you what I like and don't like about it, and then I'll give it a rating. This week's song, Bending Hectic by The Smile. Released on June 20th, 2023. Bending Hectic is the first single by The Smile, which will be on their upcoming 2024 album, Wall of Eyes. The Smile is made up of Radiohead guitarist Johnny Greenwood and Radiohead frontman Tom York, along with non-Radiohead drummer Tom Skinner. I'm a fan of the experimental elements of this song and, and what The Smile has done. I'm going to warn you though, around five and a half minutes in the song, it's very experimental and as I would describe it, annoying. <laughs> all in all, The Smile as a band might be considered by quite a few, including myself, an extension of Radiohead. I'm going to give Bending Hectic these three emojis as a rating. Uh, the lungs emoji, because Tom York has some powerful lungs. The blueberries emoji, because I like blueberries, but they're not my favorite fruit. As to say, I like this song, but it's not my favorite. Uh, and then the hammer emoji, because honestly, David, I think they nailed it. And that's going to do it for Dan's song review. And what a great review that was. Dan McCullough, thanks so much for sending that in. What did you think about that review? I thought it was powerful, man. A powerful I review. It. I think so. Yeah, I, I, it sounded like, um, yeah, like early experimental stuff. I'm, I'm absolutely adding that to my Spotify playlist, no doubt. That's perfect. You'll have to go back and take another listen, it sounds like. But that's great. Thanks again, Dan, for sending that in. Do you listen to Radiohead? I believe that's what it was. It was, a, it was former members of Radiohead have started a new band, and it's an album to release mm. 2024. I don't mind Radiohead. I, I definitely like Tom York. I like his dancing. Well, that's perfect. Then you'll probably love that song. We have a great segment coming up here, so a lot of voicemails and emails that we need to catch up on today. What are you doing? I'm emailing David Collins. That's right, David Collins Collins and emails. 
And we have a quick email. Now, let me ask you, Joe Gorman, do you know Cardiff Electric? No, I do not. So we're participating in a small competition that he was hosting. I wanted my viewers to send in a joke that includes the word immolate so that we could send it to his competition there. Do you have any jokes with the word immolate? Emulate. No, I don't. Surprisingly difficult. But we did have one come in, an email from Simone in Laramie, Wyoming. Hey, David. I wanted to participate in the joke contest with the word immolate. I don't follow Cardiff Electric, but I hope he likes it. Why did the candle go to therapy? To deal with immolation ideations. Mm. Thanks, David. And thank you, Simone. That was a great joke. We'll send that to Cardi right away. And if anybody else has a joke that includes the word immolate, make sure you send that to me, dc 30 minute half hour at gmail.com, so we can forward that over to Cardiff Electric. Did you think of any jokes with the word immolate while we were going through that? Ah, I wish I did. I probably should have been using that time, but I was so enraptured by Simone's joke. Right, a great joke. I hope Simone does comedy. Otherwise, I'm embarrassed. We have another call in here from friend of the show, B-Dude. We have an international Jamaican correspondent that likes to give us a call. And it's always great to hear for whatever B dude's doing this week. Let's take a little listen. Hey, David, B dude, yeah, calling with some beautiful vibes from Jamaica, man. Me just have to reach out this week, cause it's Thanksgiving time, and you know we feel iry down here, giving thanks for all the blessings from Ja. Talk of Thanksgiving, me got some serious plans, brother. We we'll talk jerk turkey, jerk pork, rice and peas, and plenty enough red stripe and rum. The whole thing, man. It gwan be a Jamaica style Thanksgiving feast, and we gonna wait. Hope you and the listeners gonna have a fantastic Thanksgiving too. Now, the big news down here is say the SAG strike finally right. done. It's been a long time coming, and we're all glad it's over. But check this. Rumors afloat round like Jamaica Beat say Cool Runnings 2 might drop soon. Me cannot believe it, man. Cool Runnings are classic, and if they're a sequel, me are going to be the first in line to watch it. Big things go on, David. All right, brother. That the way we be in the one love oasis. Keep the vibes high, keep the laughter rolling, and have a blessed Thanksgiving, me dude. And you have a great Thanksgiving also, B dude. Always great to hear what you and your friends are up to. What did you think about B dude this week? I love that guy, and I'm I'm excited to meet another cool runnings fan. Of course. Are you a fan of that movie? I love it, man. You must be relieved this sag strike has ended then. Finally, dude. I'm glad that Dougie Doug's getting taken care of. That's you know, may I ask, so many of the comedians that we have on this show happen to be members of that organization. Are you a member of SAG? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm off the books. I see. Well, yeah. we had another call in here that we wanted to listen to. Eastern Iowa comedian Austin Ingalls makes a regular call into this show, and it's always great to hear what he has to say. Why don't we take a quick listen here to Austin Ingalls in Iowa? Cool. David. You already know who it is. Your weekly correspondence, Austin Ingalls. Hey, Caitlyn Jenner just defended Donald Trump Jr. on Twitter by calling his haters retarded. Uh Uh-oh. Except she spelled it with a T instead of a D. Retarded. (laughs) I would make fun of her, but Caitlyn loves dropping the D. (laughs) Thanks, David. And thank you, Austin Ingalls. Boy, what a joke. A little edgy, but we have been getting edgier on this new season here. What did you think about that? I like that guy, man. I like, you know what? Edgy stuff is important. It, it's it's good. Right. You know, and, and I like that he had the courage to say that. Definitely. On, on, on you, live. You won't find Austin not being courageous. I'll tell you that. And that's great. I told you we had a great connection here and I knew it right away. You love these same people that we have joining the show. And anybody else who likes that Austin Ingalls joke, maybe follow him on Instagram. A Ingles underscore on the gram. Find Austin Ingle and all of his jokes. And that sound means it's time for our second and last game. This is a personal favorite game of mine. This game is called Name the Imposter. We're going to give a list of four names, and one of those people is not going to fit in with that group, and you're going to have to tell me which one of those four is the imposter. 
-hmm. Joe Gorman, are you ready to play Name the Imposter? I am. That's perfect. Name the imposter. And everybody playing at home, make sure you remember, email me dc 30 minute half hour at gmail.com your answers, and we'll compare them at the end. Let's look at round one of Name the Imposter. Round one. Dave Grohl, Stevie Wonder, Billy Gibbons, Dusty Hill. Name the imposter. Billy Gibbons. Dave Grohl, Stevie Wonder, Billy Gibbons, Dusty Hill. You're going to go with Billy Gibbons. Yeah. Ah. I'm sorry, that's not correct. These were four rock stars with beards. Notable um. rock stars with a beard. It's a bit of a trick there. Stevie Wonder ah. does have something under his lip. Nobody would call yeah. it a beard, though. Do you like this game? Yeah. I, I do, I do. Now, I'd like okay. to compare this to Gorman versus Goreman and name the mm. imposter. Which one do you think is your favorite? I still think Gorman versus Goreman is my favorite of the two. Well, that's great. Maybe so we'll change far. your mind on this next round, though. Let's yeah. look at round two of Name the Imposter. Okay. A, Sylvester. B, Secretariat. C, Seabiscuit. Or D, okay. Frankel. Can you name the imposter? Sylvester, Secretariat, Seabiscuit, and Frankel. I'm going to say Sylvester. That's great. And you're doing much better on round two here. That's right. Sylvester go. is a famous cat. The other three, all famous horses. Hmm. That was round two of Name the Imposter. Let's look at round three here. Okay. A, Eric Weddle. B, Michael Jordan. C, Stephen Curry. D, Barry Sanders. Can you name that imposter? Barry Sanders. I'm sorry. The answer was Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry. Mm. You know, someone is going to have to give me an assistance there. Jerry, we should be writing these phonetically. But the answer was Stephen Curry. These were all cool. retired athletes. Ah. Stephen Curry, not retired yet. Mm. That was name the imposter. Joe Gorman, it's been yeah. so nice speaking with you. So nice to have you on the show. Thanks so much for coming on today. Did you like the games? Did you have a good time? I had a blast. I had so much fun. Thank you for having me, David. That's perfect. And thanks for coming on again. Do you have anything else you want to say to our audience? Um, just follow me online on Twitter, Instagram, at Joe W. Gorman. At Joe W. Gorman. And remember, if he has a guitar, you're looking at the wrong one. That's mm -hmm. perfect. What a great episode. Everybody listening, I've been David Collins, and you've been the best. David Collins. 30 minutes. Show with David Collins.